one. Shit on it. If you're new to film photography, then no doubt you're already finding out how costly mistakes can be and also how disheartening they can be as well. And even if you're not new into film photography like myself, you're still making these same mistakes time and time again. They say you learn from your mistakes, but sometimes they come back and bite you on the ass. Oh bloody hell, this ain't tickety-boo. But don't worry, we all make mistakes. And in this video, I'm gonna list the top 10 mistakes and problems that I've come across in the past and how to fix them. And stick around till the end because number one, it's probably the most common mistake that we all make and still do. A pretty common mistake that we all make when we're starting out in film photography, and sometimes it still can catch us out, is not loading the film correctly in your SLR or inside your camera. If you haven't loaded it correctly, you go out, you start shooting, you start advancing, taking shots, and it's only maybe halfway through if you're lucky, or you look down and you think, this is strange, I'm sure I'm taking more than 36 shots, and you just keep going anyway, but then you realise you haven't loaded the film properly inside the camera. And there is a good indication that can show you if you've loaded your film correctly, and that sits right up there on top of the camera, with these SLRs anyway, with the rewind crank. And if your film is loaded correctly, that rewind crank will turn as you're advancing the film. So that's a good indication that your film is loaded correctly and you're taking shots. If not, you can end up developing and having completely blank frames and you're none of the wiser at all. You look at your film and you go, Christ, where's all my pictures? You ain't got a clue. Then you start thinking, is it my development? Is it, the, is it the developer that's gone? Have I fixed it first or what? You know, and then it can lead to all sorts of problems. You're thinking to yourself, well, where's all my photographs? I know I shot a load. So an easy way to stop that from happening is when you've loaded your film, keep your eye on the rewind crank there. And as you start advancing your film, do it slowly so it doesn't slip off. And again, and as you go through, you just start seeing it to turn, but it can sometimes fool you because inside the film cassette, it's a little bit loose. So it's gonna take a while for that, uh, for that loose film inside to catch up and that could fool you. So what I often do is just open the rewind crank like so and just slowly tighten it up. Not too tight that it's gonna pull or take the film off, but very just enough taut that I know that the loose film inside is, um, is, is tighter. Then once I start to advance, then that will start turning around. So that's probably a most common mistake that people do and it leads to uh, blank frames and then you question in your hell why on earth have I got blank frames when you're sure that you've gone out and shot well in fact you ain't taking no pictures at all because the film hasn't done nothing inside the camera. And that brings me on to another common mistake that happens to me and that's cutting off with the scissors the last frame of the film. And that happens because I bulk load a lot of my films, so I use the cassettes time and time again. So when I've used the cassette, I'll rewind it back once I've done all my pictures, I'll rewind it back inside the camera, leaving the leader out slightly. So when I take the film out, I can just cut the edge off, put it onto my reel, my spiral for the uh, uh, developing tank, cut the end off, develop normally. And sometimes by doing that, I accidentally cut off the last frame. And as much as I try to remember when I'm out shooting, if I've got 36 on a shot, I usually try and leave a two, one or two at the end blank so it stops me doing that, I still sometimes get fooled by it. But that's not a problem if you don't bulk load. If you go into the dark room and crack these open with a tin opener, there's no problem there. You just cut away right at the very end. You've got no problem with that at all. But for me and others that bulk load, I bet you some of you have done it as well before in the past, you've accidentally cut the last frame off. So what I'm trying to do with that one is leave a couple of frames left at the end of each film. Might be a waste of two shots, but at least I haven't wasted or cut half of a decent photograph. Now this one's got me a few times because I've been a bit sloppy and that's double exposing on the same roll of film. So I've gone out, I've taken my pictures on a roll of film, I've mixed them up accidentally, I've put the same roll of film back inside the camera and gone off and shot and double exposed the whole lot. It ain't great fun when you realise that's happened. And again, because I save my cassettes for my bulk loading, I leave the leader hanging out. So I just pull the film out of the camera and I've got the leader hanging out. But sometimes I'm in a rush because I'm putting another roll of film inside the camera and I throw one in my bag and then I get them mixed up. I've done that quite a few times, but I've got into the habit of just kinking, when I take the film out of the camera, just kinking the leader and twisting it and, and folding it a couple of times and then throwing that in the bag. That way I know I've already shot that roll of film. Some people might go, well, just be a little bit more organized. Sometimes I'm not, when I'm shooting quick, Changing films at the festivals or something like that, I'll just quickly chop over the film, throw it in the bag, and, oh, get it mixed up. 
it happens and I bet it's happened to you as well. So that's a nice little tip for whatever reason, if you're shooting film, um, when you take the film out of the camera, if you are one of those that leave the leader hanging out for whatever reason, just give it a little tiny bend and that way you know that you've, it's an exposed roll of film. You could write on it, but maybe you haven't got a pen. <laughs> So this is a pretty common one, and I know this because I get this time and time again on emails and also private messages where someone's shot a roll of film, they developed it, and they ain't got no pictures on the film whatsoever. It's completely blank, and they're asking me what went wrong. So there's a few ways that you can look at this. If after you've developed your film and you look at the whole strip of negative and the whole lot is completely clear, there's no leader, there's no edge markings, then the chances is that you've fixed the film first, which is easy to do if you don't label your jugs. So that's one habit that I've been trying to get into for many years, or especially when I first started, was labeling my jugs so that I didn't mix up my developer and my fixer, because by doing that, I could instantly see what my developer is and what my fixer is and put them in a line in a row. So one, two, three, develop, stop and fix. If you look at your negative strip and you can see the nice heavy dense leader and you can see edge markings and there's no photographs on your film at all, that means for some reason the camera hasn't exposed any photographs. Either the film hasn't advanced and you haven't loaded it properly as we said in the, in the first um, scenario, that could happen. Or it could be possibly where you're shooting a range finder such as this one here and you've left the lens cap on, another easy mistake. Or it could be a problem or a fault with the camera. So if you have got a leader on your film and you've got edge markings but no photographs, then you're gonna to have to start looking at the camera. Did you leave the lens cap on? Is the aperture working? Is it opening up on your camera? It's not stuck at F22 or whatever. And also is the shutter working as well? Is it exposing the film? <laughs> Another common problem that comes through to me is people saying that they've got very thin negatives. A thin negative where you can pretty much see through it, you can't really see much photographs on it, indicates an unexposed photograph or underdeveloped film. And trust me, I've got plenty of underdeveloped and underexposed negatives to show you guys. So again, it could be a camera problem. You could, your lens could be stuck on a very small aperture and you're taking your photographs, you're not realizing and you're underexposing. That could lead to very thin negatives or your developer may be shot as well, or you might not have given enough development time, your times not, might not be right. So it's also worth doing a little developer check as well if that happens to you. And there's two ways that you can check if your developer's working or not. The way that I always choose is cut off a piece of leader, I mix up my developer, if it's one part to one part or stock or whatever, and I'll develop it inside a jar for whatever time, if it's 10 minutes, 12, whatever. And I'll just do my inversions as a little stir every minute for five seconds. And at the end of that, once I've fixed the film and I have a look through that leader, if it's nice and dense, then I know that my times and my developer is working okay. Another way of doing it is just dropping a piece of developer on the film, let it run for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever, and then fix it and then have a look through it that way. But I always use the first way where I put a piece of film leader inside the jar. That always works for me. And sometimes I can also tweak my times by doing that as well. And more often than not, I get decent results but that also shows me that my developer's working. Also, if you're getting thin negatives, it could be a metering problem inside your camera or your light meter. So it's worth, if you've got a meter inside the camera, it's worth doing a check with the Sunny 16 and seeing if that works, or get an, an iPhone app or an Android app or whatever, and just check your camera's meter against one of those apps. You know, you'll soon find out if it's way off or not. They should be pretty much on par with each other. And of course, there's the other scenario, that you've chosen the wrong speed for the film you're shooting. So you've chosen 3200 ISO on the camera's meter and you've put 100 speed film inside, you're gonna get underexposed negatives, which could lead to negatives looking thin. Another common problem that we all come across, I do it, you do it, we can get a little bit sloppy sometimes with negatives, they can get a little bit scratched, but sometimes you're totally miffed as to where the scratches are coming from. Often or not, I find a very thin line all the way across my negative, and I'm looking at it thinking, crikey, where's that come from? So somewhere along the process, there's been a little tiny bit of grit or grain somewhere in my process that's made that scratch. Any other scratches around the negative, it's generally just bad handling, but if there's one long thin line, um, it can be a real pain to try and resolve. But all you need to do with that is just make sure 
all your gear is clean. If you're gonna be cleaning your camera, use a little tiny brush and just try and wipe away any grit that you might not be able to see. And uh, also have a little fill around the camera as well where the film gets taken up onto the take-up spool. You might have a little tiny kink or something rough there that might be causing the scratch. So it could be inside the camera or it could be inside your developing tank or on your scanning equipment. So just check everything that you've got. Um, if you do start to see a very thin line or a scratch, it might be a one-off, hopefully it is. But sometimes if you, if you see it again and again, there's a problem somewhere with your camera or your developing tank or your reel or a squeegee or something like that. So it's a process along the way that's giving you that scratch. It is a pain, but it can be eliminated. <laughs> And another common problem I get from people asking me is about negatives being very dense. They look at the negatives and they're almost pretty much jet black. But generally it's overexposure, user error, or it could be overdevelopment. Or maybe your developer is too strong, or maybe it's too hot. That's what's caused the overdevelopment and made the negatives very dense. So if you see that your negatives are very black, uh, very inky looking, especially on the edge markings on the rebate, that will give you a good indication if you've overdeveloped, that will be very inky and very black as well. But again, like the underdevelopment, just check your uh, camera, check your aperture, and also check your metering as well. Is that all working correctly for you? <laughs> Another one we come across from time to time is strange marks or strange things on the negatives. That could be a whole multitude of problems. I like to often think that it's something to do with the process rather than the manufacturer. Or it could be if you're shooting expired film, you can get some pretty dodgy emulsions out of that. But the most two common ones that you'll find is uh, small little tiny circles on your negatives. That could be from um, trapped bubbles that sit on the emulsion as you're developing. A good way of getting rid of that is to tap the tank the old school way um, when you're developing your film to eliminate any bubbles sitting on the film. And also arcing as well. You might look at, especially on 120 film, you might look at your film afterwards and you see these little white arcing lines, um, kind of like semicircle stuff going on. That's often where you've been fighting in the darkroom trying to get it on the reel and it's kinked the film and you'll get that arcing once you've developed. That's a common mistake to make. So, you know, just got to be careful when you're loading your 120 film or any film and also be careful when you're developing. Make sure you give it a little tap uh, during your inversions to make sure it lifts any bubbles off. I haven't really seen that much problems with that in the past, but I certainly have seen the arcing. And I've used um, a book behind me to show you guys examples of that because I went through my negatives and I couldn't find any <laughs> examples. <laughs> uh, that means I've been doing it all right, but I have got a few I know, but I just couldn't find them. But it is a real pain when you want to go in the dark room and make a print and you've got some imperfections on your negatives. There's nothing worse than seeing that, like the scratches as well. <laughs> So in a minute, I'll be coming on to the most common mistake, which I'll show you with these two cameras here. But for now, we'll get on to fixing film. Now, this is a common problem that most of you would do when you start film photography, developing at home. You'll go across the shooting, you'll come home, you'll develop your film, you'll stop the film, you'll get in the fixer, you'll start enjoying it. You can't wait to see your negatives, and all of a sudden, you pour the fixer back in the jug, you pull your film out, look at it, and it's all a little bit foggy, a little bit milky and you think, oh no, what's gone wrong? I've somehow I've ruined the film. Well, generally it just means that the fixer hasn't done its job. Either you haven't fixed for long enough, or maybe the fixer is exhausted and just needs replacing. The best way to do that is put the film back in the fixer, maybe for a couple more minutes. If that doesn't do the job, you know that your fixer's shot and you need to replace the fixer. And the fixer's job is there just to get rid of all the unexposed silver on the film. So just mix yourself a new batch of fixer, and then refix your film, give it a wash, and you'll be fine, you'll be good to go. You'll notice it should come out nice and clear, no problem at all. So there's no need to throw your film away or wash it and go, this is all rubbish and throw it in the bin. Just give it another fix, you'll be fine. And the most common mistake, I put out a post on the community area on the YouTube channel asking what people's most common mistake is. I'll put a link in the description, I'll go onto the community area, you'll see it yourself, see what other people have said. And uh, the most common mistake was leaving the lens cap on the camera on a rangefinder or a view camera and taking your shots. Obviously, <laughs> not taking any shots. And I get that. I've done that so many times with this Holger. In fact, I now leave the lens cap at home when I take the Holger out with me because the amount of times I've taken this out of the bag, uh, taken a couple of shots, moved on, and then realized oh, I had the lens cap on. The thing is, you can't see through the lens. 
with these cameras, you've only got a view hole to see through. And it's like the range finders as well. This is a Leica MP range finder, uh, lens caps on. If I look through there, I can see everything. So it's quite an easy mistake to make. This one has got a light meter inside, so the light meter doesn't work if the lens cap's on. Um, it will just basically say, what do you want me to meter on? Because everything's dark. So I go, oh, crikey, yeah, lens cap's on. But the amount of times I've actually done that, pick this camera up to take a shot, focusing in, and I'm looking at the light meter going, what's going on? It's just arrows, nothing's working. Oh, I've got a lens cap on. Take it off again. Very common mistake to make. And even the Vogue photographer, Brian Duffy, God rest his soul, he made this mistake when he was commissioned to shoot the famous German composer Otto Nosen Klimpera. I've probably totally butchered that name. Otto insisted that the photographer used a Leica because of its quiet shutter, but Duffy didn't have a Leica. So someone lent him one and he attended the concert and he took his photographs of this great maestro only to realize at the end that he'd left his lens cap on the whole time, which was pointed out by the maestro himself. Duffy had gave the film to the boys in the lab who'd realized his error and they saved his ass by owning up and saying that it was them that ruined the film. And it actually saved Duffy's career with Vogue. You can watch that video on Brian Duffy talking about this. I'll put a link in the description. It's quite an interesting watch. So anyway, guys, that's my top 10 mistakes. I've made every single one of those in the past and sometimes I still do hit one or two of them along the way. We all make mistakes. Let us know in the comments what your most common mistake is. I'd love to know. I'm sure other people would like to read it as well. And if you've overcome any mistakes that you've continuously done in the past, all of a sudden you don't do it anymore, let us know what your, uh, what your recipe was for that because uh, or your fix was for that. That'll be interesting to read for me and others as well. As always, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you next time.